Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, CJ Stroud, the Texans. Great season. Tough L on the road. Divisional round versus Baltimore. We are diving into it. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. Before we dive into the video, quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of the channel. Not only is it a great, cheap way to support the channel, but you get even more Quarterback School content. So if you dig this video, you will love the Quarterback School Patreon community. Hop over there, join, become a member. I appreciate it. As for this video, let's get into it. CJ Stroud, the Texans, tough L on the road in the playoffs versus a very good Baltimore Ravens defense. Okay, This is an early third and nine. We're going to take off and scramble. He's not going to get it. The Ravens do a nice job of kind of building that fence right in front of the front, in front of the first down. Now, let me preface this, okay, by saying it's easy to be super critical months later at a playoff L. Okay, I get that. I also want to say, you know, specifically on this play, I see why CJ Stroud takes off and runs here. You can see that lane open up down the hash, right? Get a little slip. But I would have loved for him to be able to find a way to be a little bit more C.J. Stroud this game in the pocket. So there are times where you have to get out and create, and he does for the most part. But this is one of those plays where if he could have got up, reset, then maybe you have the tight end coming across the number three on that you know, Y cross for a first down. Maybe. Okay, the other thing to pay attention to here is that there really aren't a lot of great options. And what I mean by that is up top here, we are getting hit at the line of scrimmage, right? This tight bum coverage, that's not a win. Okay, whatever we're trying to do here, out into the seven maybe. Down here to the bottom, this little quick out, it's third and nine. It might look open with the video, but that's because he's looking this way. <clears throat> so this corner never feels threatened to go close this. This is not going to get a first down in my opinion either. Now the play that maybe could get us a first down the number three coming across on this Y cross, it's going to take some time. So we're going to have to get back in the pocket, up, reset, easier said than done, and let this thing kind of develop down the field. I think they pair it with a shallow. So, you know, maybe that's there. But again, this is one of those things where you can see the up top matchup. They're being physical and they're knocking us around. Nowhere to go up top. Down here to the bottom. Even if you throw and catch that, it's not a first down. You got to get to the 35. So maybe the crosser up, he decides to go, and they do a great job. They got three guys there for that tackle. That's not going to be a first. So just, you know, a tip of the cap for the defense. And again, just acknowledging the fact that the pressure, what they were doing up front, the pass protection was an issue in this game. So right here, it's pretty good. You'd love to get up and reset. And again, it's a bummer that he kind of slips here because that probably jacks with his timing. But he goes to take off, and we're punting. All right, the next offensive play here for the Texans, big play action shot. You're going to see their kind of what I'm going to call alert process. They're getting into the call that they want. We're going to catch middle field closed, rotation up top. We're going to have an opportunity for multiple shots down the field here. You know, neither of them are thrown. We get the completion to the check down. And we can acknowledge taking a profit is rarely a bad thing. But right here, I just want to talk through, you know, some of the super nuanced detail as far as maybe how this thing could and should have played out. So without knowing exactly what the read is and not pretending to, but looking at CJ Stroud and the fact that he's playing this thing out to the left. So we see 82 and nine getting vertical right here on the left. Well, 82 is going to run an in. Nine is going to run what I'm going to call a corner. Now, it's the angle of departure for me that is the difference here. And again, you're just not going to get many shot opportunities in the playoffs versus a team like the Ravens. So watch that one and two route distribution up top. I, I Originally, I thought it was scissors, but it's more in corner. And my thing about this, and again, this is not a shot at this guy. This is more, hey, 
how are they teaching this? What, what, what are they asking him to do? Because if they're asking him to come out to whatever yardage and run to whatever yardage on a corner, you know, that's what he did. I think maybe you could throw it, but I personally would prefer to go, you know, you just don't see this, this combination to me in with what I'm going to call this corner or seven very often. It's a unique combination. I would like this angle to be as high as possible. So what do I mean by that? I mean that as we come by here and run this in, it's essentially a glorified clear that we can come back here and as we run up, as soon as you feel this thing, you don't want to come flat because if there's someone in the flat as a defender out here, you're just closing the door to him, right? Like you're just making that easy as opposed to you come out and you want to set this thing as high as possible so that that window to throw you the ball is as big as possible. When you come out shallow and flat or tight, you're just covering yourself. And again, is that on him? Is that on the scheme? Is that on the route? Is that on the coaching? Only they know. Yeah. The reality is, though, it, when you look at this play, if he were to come out higher, he's got a shot for a big play. If that's not the play, so if we're not trying to go here and we're trying to read this out, whatever this is down here, post or flag, with an in, that in is there as well. So you just you got two opportunities here that, again, yes, this is nitpicky. This is the NFL fucking playoffs, okay? You can see how close they are. Again, watch nine. If nine were to come out high right here, right? So instead of this angle right into the flat defender to come out more steep this way, again, maybe the corner sees it and falls off. Maybe. But then we've got the in right here. So, you know, it's just one of those things where, man, this is just razor thin close to being a big chunk play down the field. Now, it ends up being a check down. Okay. You're just not going to get many opportunities like this. And it felt like the Texans missed a few opportunities down the field. And it's not necessarily, hey, CJ missed that. I don't think that's the case. I think that this is really close to hitting, really close to being a perfect play. But you can see just how thin these angles are. Again, he's working to the left, doesn't like it, get it down. Nice job from Stroud, get a completion, feel good about it, move the chains. Next one, third and eight, okay, bottom of the screen. We're going to work this little scramble to the right. Now we'll talk through the coverage here as they essentially get a plus one everywhere and play some iteration of brackets. It's a big time play, big time catch from the back. The capacity to get out there and run what I'm going to call a choice or an option. It's not there. CJ Stroud does a great job escaping to his right. Shows an awesome flick, gives his guy a chance, and that's a big third down conversion. Okay, but what, what's going on here is essentially we're in empty three by two, right? Three eligibles, two eligibles. Well, defensively, they're trying to get a plus one. So what does that mean? They're trying to get three defenders to R2 and four defenders. There's three, and they're going to push that fourth guy. So they've got a plus one on both sides, plus one, plus one. All right, that's not the end of the world. But what we probably don't want to do is come up and run an in into what I'm going to call some iteration of brackets or quarters here. That's not going to be there. Now we are relying on our back to run, I'll call it an option or a choice, meaning he could go in, out, or settle. It might just be a quick out versus a pretty damn good linebacker in space. That's really the only throw you got if you're going to work down here. Because you're not going to be able to hit the wrap in. You're going to have to throw it to the slot if you're on time. Now, again, CJ Stroud does a nice job not doing that. This thing is undercut. He does a great job in coverage. CJ Stroud does this a number of times in this game. Escape to his right and make a play. And it's damn awesome play. These are the types of plays that he was going to have to make all day to have a chance in this game. So down here to the bottom, you can see the wrap in. Not there, right? You're going to see that number two, the back and the flat. Yeah, it's going to be tight. Get out, create, great touch out of structure. That's a beautiful throw. My goodness. So we've got to go. It's not there on time. Up and out. Look at the touch. I mean, he barely got his feet set. On the move. Give your guy a chance. You know, 
maybe a little early there on the coverage as well. Big catch. Hell yeah, first down. Next one here. Plays like this are really tough to overcome as a quarterback. We're an empty, the number three up top, the sniffer. It sure looks like he just blows his assignment. So again, this compounds here. So watch number nine, left tight end. You can see him blocked down. And then someone comes right off the edge. Now, do I know for sure that he blows the assignment? No. I would bet a lot of money that he does. Now, the other part about this, so whatever we're supposed to do here, if he's supposed to block here and then we're hot here, well, then this play sucks. And if that's the case, the quarterback can't take it and just spike it into the ground because that's a penalty. That's exactly what happens. Now, the other thing potentially that this could be, this could be like a delay or a leak where you block and then you escape or you are the hot. Regardless for me, okay, this is a mental error. I'm going to label without knowing for sure, just looking at the film, but you can't compound. So mental error, I'm going to then compound it with another mental error here. Now, again, I don't think he's supposed to delay and get out into the flat. I think he just blows his blocking assignment. C.J. Stroud sees the free runner and tries to skunk this thing. That, to me, is a quarterback mental error. Mental error plus mental error equals dumpster fire. Okay, now we're in a penalty. Now it's terrible down a distance. So it's just one of those things where, as a unit, nowhere near good enough on this day. So there, panic. That's a penalty. Here comes the flag. Now, but you can also see C.J. Stroud talking, it looks like, to nine, saying something. Either you need to be in the flat or you got to block that guy. One or the other. And no, maybe it's all nine and I'm, you know, labeling an issue to C.J. Stroud that it shouldn't be. My thing about it is if we're going to do six-person protection at an empty, so five, there's six with the sniffer, and we're going to run, you know, We'll call this double in with like a glance down here to the bottom. And we're going to catch middle field closed. We're going to be rotating here. This is not a premium look to rip this glance or tight eight. But it's a pretty good look. You're getting rotation. And again, it'd be better if it was this guy rotating to the middle to hit this space. But still, if we were blocked up, I would expect the ball to go here. But it looks like we just have an air here. Regardless, this is losing football. We're moving the ball. We're about to get in the red zone. We have a mental mistake somewhere. We compound it with another one. And there it is. And again, you can see the glance down here to the bottom. Boom. That's tough. The penalties really killed them. You know, this is one of those videos where I'm not going to show every single little penalty. But these types of penalties and then compounded with another penalty are just absolute drive bombs. It's over. Another tough one, second and long, three by one. CJ Stroud's going to escape to the right, find the tight end on a little scramble drill, post mailbox, drop. Can't catch it for him. I mean, just brutal. So you got mental mistakes. You've got drops with chunk plays like this deep down the field. I mean, that is right on his face, right? It's not a perfect throw, right? You'd love to lead him up the sideline, but we're escaping. We've got three guys chasing us. We give our guy a chance. It's like a volleyball block. The thunk, punch the ground. Damn. So it's just one of those things where th there are just too many variables going against you when you're playing like this on the road in the playoffs. But I think you've got to be pretty impressed with C.J. Stroud for the most part. He's... Still giving his team a chance, making some really impressive throws. Again, the feel here, we're just kind of buying time, buying time, buying time, out of structure, dot, damn. Next one here, third and 10. Love this. Quads, four by one, hot, get the ball out to the number two down here, make somebody miss, go get a first down. That's a big time play. Now, Really nice job here by C.J. Stroud. He is hot. We got a free runner in the right B-gap. Okay. 
would probably bet a lot of money that the right tackle is in the wrong here and that needs to be squeezing this thing down. You can see everybody squeeze it down the right guard, the tight end, 86, except 77. So we get a free runner in the B gap. Doesn't matter. He still overcomes it. Technically, I would guess that the free runner should be 92 on the outside D. But that's a nice job from Stroud. Getting it out quickly. Great job by Collins. Making somebody miss. Go get it first down. You can watch how quickly this happens. So quads, one by four. You can see the pressure come. Here it comes. Know what to do with the ball versus zero. Catch throw. And again, you can see the space down here to the bottom. And they're just running a little layer. So a go with a seven or a corner by the number three. Catch throw. Make somebody miss. Get vertical. Go get a first down. Super efficient, effective offense. The quarterback has answers. C.J. Strauss knows what they are. Watch how quickly he's able to play. Catch throw. Whoop. Make somebody miss. Vertical. Let's go. Next one here, after a penalty, uh, first and 15, we're going to rip deep out down here to the new number one. C.J. Stroud's going to buy a little bit of time, drift, and throw a dot outside the numbers deep down the field. <laughs> that is on the body, on the break. Outstanding. Great play design here with the motion. Pulled the left guard. And we got the run action downhill. 86 does a fantastic job <laughs> keeping his stride. This is a beautiful route. So watch this route down here to the bottom of the screen. He is going to keep his stride through the cut. So this is deep down the field. That's a big dude. Beautiful stride. Watch what it does to the DB. Turns 28. Whoop. Watch CJ Stroud. When does he let this thing go? Pat's right there. <clears throat> a little bit of anticipation. You know we got to do it. Lowercase, we'll call it. But what I love is this stride, 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 stride. There's no choppy chop and then into it. It's all stride, 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 out stride. And again, in baseball turns, the DB, he's never going to get there. And it's a dot of a throw, right? Right on his chest. First and 15, go get it all back. That is outstanding. Beautiful throw. Dun. Let this thing play one more time. Let it wash over you. Play fake. By time, great base, anticipation, a strike. Hell yes. A really nice job here. Nice pass protection as well. Dot. <laughs> Next one here, second and eight. I'm used to calling this play wide delay. You basically fake to the left, fake to the right, and try to throw like a tight end delay. It's not even really a screen. Uh, this is a really fortunate play. This could easily be a turnover. Uh, this is going to start, you know, the parade of what I'm going to call the Rough Rapids for 69. You know, I personally think he gets a little lost here. I'm also not going to lay all the blame on the right guard here. C.J. Stroud, for me, really, this is universal for quarterbacks. Any type of backfield screen. And to me, this would classify as a backfield screen. Anything like to the running backs or to the tight ends while the quarterback is still in the backfield. So... We're going to come out here, pump this way, whirly bird, pump this way, and then we're going to throw that delay right here. So the tight end usually blocks and then inserts here. Okay, so the first thing here, besides for the quarterback footwork, any type of backfield screen or tight end sniffer screen, to me, it's the quarterback's responsibility to get the ball there without it getting tipped. Okay, let me say that again. Backfield screens, quarterback's responsibility. So you've got to either find a lane or you've got to hand grenade this thing up and over. But if it gets tipped, it's hard to ask. It's not like quick game where you can tell these guys to chop or get their hands down or strike their ribs. It's really difficult. This is on the quarterback to find the lane. Now, that being said, to me, this play is very much a zone-centric play. So we're going to come out, pump, and then we're going to whirly bird pump and hey, well that shit doesn't matter because they've got a guy on this guy it's man to man so right away probably not the greatest call in the world because he's going to set the block and he's just going to chill here and there's no it's not a screen where someone's coming out to block him right so it's man to man not the greatest call in the world also right guard stay on your guy don't get lost don't get loose with your eyes 
watch him think that he now has to block six. So we either get on six right now at the line of scrimmage or stay on the big guy. But we can't go pump, pump, and now navigate two guys. We can navigate six, but let's have right guard stay on 98. That will keep his hands down, and then it's still a catch and tackle. But this could very easily be a turnover. This is a fortunate, lucky, non-turnover. Get lucky. Next one. This is a run play, okay? Third and one. We got to get this. Okay, I thought the interior of the offensive line struggled. Left side right here, left guard to me. This is a massive mental error, massive missed assignment. And we'll talk about how and why it's tough. And I'm not going to even tell you that I know exactly what run this is. I would say it's blocked like weak side inside zone. But the little stem action. So first, let's talk about the defense that I want you to watch. Watch the edge player and the backer here. Late move. Okay, so they're going to late shift down. And he's going to then walk out. Okay, at the snap here, pre-movement, this is a double team between these two here and a one-on-one -on -one block right there, base block with the left tackle. When they move, you've got to move in real time. So as he comes down, now he becomes the left guards. As he moves out, now he becomes the left tackles. Now again, I'm talking universal ball. Maybe they've got some special play on. And the reason I don't think it's weak side inside zone is because the back's footwork to me is more jabby. See how he takes that drop step? You wouldn't really do that on weak side inside zone. So it's some sort of short yardage, hybrid run, whatever. I don't really give a shit. I do care that the left guard can't see the movement. So right here, this call is made to order. Okay, These two, right there. Right here, one-on-one. -on -one. That's made to order. Once we move him down, him out, well, now at the snap, we've got to go one on one, one on one, one on one. Okay, we, you, you absolutely cannot go down here like you've got your eyes closed and not see this movement. This is, the, this is easy stuff. I mean, it's not easy stuff, it's easier than the outcome. I mean, this is a disaster. Third and one. This is a disaster. This is losing football. I mean, right at the point of attack, a free guy in the B-gap on third and one? <laughs> Fuck. Damn, 70. And again, you can see the left tackle. Look at the left tackle. Point him out. I love it. Point him out. Talk to him. But 79 so fired up to double team the shit out of that shade that we get nothing. No adjustment. Eyes closed. TFL. Punt. All right, so let's do a little game check in here. It's 10 to 10, third and 13. 25 seconds before the two-minute warning in the second quarter. And we're going to start rolling down here. We're going to rip it deep into the bottom. Now, this is it, this ends up looking like, oh, this is a sweet play. This is there from the jump. Look how wide open it is. I think it's a great job by C.J. Stroud seeing this coverage because at the snap, I don't think there's anything that would tell you that this is going to be there. And so when you see the safety react and C.J. Stroud buy some time, he's then able to kind of create this lane, this space, and see this space. So what am I talking about? Okay, it's third and forever. All right, this is not a good feeling. We are going to rip this in down here to the bottom of the screen. And they're going to get to closed. Well, if I was to tell you that they're going to get to close here and that they have this DB type right here, this in is not looking great, coach. But what happens here is they basically play this like a three by one. And this guy poaches or tries to tricks, come back over and play the strong side and catch the crosser coming across. So what looks like it's going to be not a great look pre-snap, once you find that weak safety, so eyes right here, and he tries to come over here and whatever your term for hook up, hunt up that front side crosser, that then creates the window. And again, C.J. Stroud is able to buy enough time, keep his base, and rip this thing. But what I want you to do here is first watch this, get closed, and then watch this safety. Watch him hunt up to that front side to the passing strength. That's then going to create the void for the in. So closed. See the safety hunt over there. As soon as he shuffles like this, boom, we got that window. And there it is. That's really, really well done. You can see if it wasn't there, you potentially got the, Big curl up top. 
It's a hell of a job. It's nice pass protection. C.J. Stroud doesn't panic. Third and forever. Look how deep they are. Buy some time. Again, as he moves, he's keeping his base, right? No heel click. Ready to throw. Rip it. Vroom, right up on the face. Strike. Hell yeah. Very next play here. First and 10. Ball's on the 47. We're going to get a little two by two and run stick down here to the bottom. They're going to bring five. Play a little three deep. Zone coverage behind it. Great job by Stroud. Seeing it. The space. Again, back to the well with 12. Love it. The ball comes out quickly. We're super decisive. We're blocked up. Look at all that space. Get vertical. Nice little mini chunk. Now, okay, it's a mini chunk. I see why it's on the video. Thanks for your approval. What's going on here is this is just a stick, right? So come up. Boop. And we're into the flat. Well, they've got three, three zone defenders with three deep. Okay, three over three. There's a lot of space over here. That's the first part. That's what everybody would watch when you're watching this. But what I want you to watch is up top. Okay. This offensive construction, this type of, you know, someone, I would bet a lot of money, made a mental error here or MA, missed assignment. One of these two things is happening because the spacing here, y'all, is not good enough. And again, this is not. You know, the preseason was not week one. This is this is what happens when you play against a really good defense. They make you do crazy shit. And right here, look at the spacing up top. It's just not how football is played. <laughs> okay? So we can acknowledge the fact that 10 guys did their job perfectly. But this type of football, it's hard to win. You might get a nice chunk here. Okay. And this this is a lot of space, right? We already talked about it. You can see the defense, right? We talked about the three under. There's a three under. Here's a three deep. Okay, the film is the film. That's why you watch the film. So even when things are going pretty damn good, we're still out of sorts. We're still not functioning at a high level. Look at the wide receiver up top. He's looking at the tight end. You got both arms up. What are you doing, dog? Why are you in my area? What are you doing? Damn, what are you doing? Actually, you might be doing a first down signal. I take that back. He was probably the guy who was in the wrong. <laughs> okay, just because you watch film, you don't have all the answers. Next one here, second and seven. Same drive before the half. This is one of those plays where I'm not saying this is an easy throw from Stroud. It's not. But we've seen him make throws like this so often that I think the throw is easier than the actual execution here. He basically puts this thing in the front row. So you got to go. We're outside the pocket. He points. We've seen him make this throw this game. Harder throws down the field. And we just miss it by, you know, a yard. Not an easy throw. Not an easy throw. But a throw I think he would expect him to make and we should expect him to make. Now, the other part of this, left guard. I hope he got tripped. Okay, we're going to find out together from the end zone. But that is tough. It's tough to play quarterback when your interior offensive linemen are getting caked. Okay, so it's just one of those things where you you don't have time to sit back there and let this thing develop. Right? Like nobody touches the left guard's feet. That's just way too wide and getting dump trucked. Hard, hard, if not impossible, to play quarterback like that. And we're so close because if we hit that, then we don't have to deal with the next third down. And the very next play is that, third and eight. We're going to run double stick up top. I think that this is one of the worst plays with C.J. Stroud this game. You know, to me, it looks like he thinks he's hot. He's essentially bailing out of there. To me, this is a full bail. You got to think 33 is looking to the right. He's got that backer who's blitzing up the A-gap. He's got six. Six runs, a little pick stunt on the center. You've got enough time to take a drop and make a better throw. Okay, so that, that's the big issue here. C.J. Stroud looks like he panics a little bit, not comfortable with the pass pro, and that's the result, third and eight. Now, the other part about this, 
Okay. I don't love double stick here. To me, this is double stick. This is a must outside release go. Down here to the bottom, they run like a little stop route. Okay. You can't really see the first down marker, but it's essentially just at the 20, like maybe the 21, like right down here. Even if you complete these double sticks, in my opinion, so even if you took a drop and threw a strike right here, to me, that doesn't get you a first down. It's third and eight. Double stick is like six yard routes. I much rather would prefer this down here. You know, unless you hate this matchup, if you like this matchup at all, one on one stop route. That, that's where, for me, where the ball should go. And again, yo, don't come at me sideways. I know it's easy with a marker and a clicker and a little rewinder and everything else. Okay, but we can also do the math. Okay, five, six protection. One, two, three, four, five, six. So someone back here has to make us hot. You know, you could even say the corner potentially could make us hot. We don't need to panic, bail, throw, slot, quick out. Because even if we do, it's not going to get a first down. Damn. So play this thing out like you had all the time in the world and you were working the stop down here to the bottom, like you're blocked up. Now, again, what would I prefer that Collins didn't do whatever this release is? Yes. I would definitely prefer him to just go and sell the hell out of that vertical. But right there, I mean, that's as good as it's going to get at the bottom of the screen. Uh, that's a win. That's a, that's a good enough job. Instead, we're bailing, throwing grounders. Damn. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. I sincerely appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me. So thank you for taking the time and doing it. Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community, you know about it. Join, become a member, get even more Quarterback School content. We also have Quarterback School courses, got a number of different courses, RPOs, pass protection, very centric to this video. How to Beat Every Coverage is the best selling course. We have an RPO course. We even have an entire offensive framework and system for you. So if you're interested in any and all of those things, you enjoy how I talk and teach ball, you will love the courses. We also have a bunch of free resources available. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. All right, second half, third and six here. Get us started. CJ Stroud escaping to his right, finding the tight end. Good enough throw. Nice catch from 86 on the body. Slide first down. So nice job from Stroud here, buy in time, you know, got enough strength and torque to make this thing happen off platform. Now, again, it's one of those things here. We're going to get a little bit in the weeds here. So you're going to have to go with me, come out of here, spin out. We've got to buy enough time as we drift here, going backwards to be able to see this and make this throw. So that's the quarterback part of it. Nice job. Great torque, great vision, nice execution, situational ball. O-line wise, okay, and this is not O-line school, but you're going to have to go with me because it's so important and tethered to the success of this position. At right guard, okay, interior wise, the way that I like to think about it is in pass protection, you really got to try to get some depth. If you play pass protection from the line of scrimmage, you're asking for trouble. So I would say let's get a little bit more depth interior wise here. And then the other thing for all five offensive linemen is you can almost never get beat inside. So if you're playing right tackle here, you never want to get beat inside. If you want to get beat anywhere, you want to get beat on the outside and try to push them by the quarterback. So, but those things impact each other. So the right tackle doesn't want to get beat inside, but he also expects the right guard to be getting depth and be kind of a bumper, a presence for him there. You can't create this big hole in the B gap because the guard gets no depth. So it's they work in, ta in tandem. They're a pass protection unit. So you can see the right tackle here. He's getting beat inside, and the right guard's not getting any depth, and our quarterback is getting hit because of it. So it's all of those things, none of which are probably good enough. So again, right tackle, don't get beat inside. Yeah, I get it. 24 when he wants to be is a beast. Right guard, get some depth. You can see how the right guard and right tackle are on different levels right there, right? That makes them able to be pierced, and now our quarterback's getting smacked on, on the ground. 
Next one here. I thought this was a beautiful play call. Really close to being a big chunk. This is a jet sweep, double reverse, screen back. And this is, you know, one block away from being a big chunk. And that was really the difference all day. One guy on damn near every other play just couldn't quite get his job done, and it impacts the outcome, the execution of every offensive snap. So great design here. We're going to go jet sweep, double reverse. So we're going to toss this thing, come back. We're going to come across, toss it back to the quarterback, and then we're going to come out here and throw the screen down here. Well, the right tackle has got to make that front first block. And I'll pause it while we're out here. If the right tackle can make this first block, this thing is going to be a big chunk. It's probably not going to score, but that safety coming down from the heavens on the near hash, if the right tackle can cover him up right there, this thing's going to be a big chunk. Now, in addition, it would be great if we didn't have so much penetration on this play and CJ Stroud didn't have to throw you know, a changeup out there with no base. But man, the right guard, the right tackle, you know, you can see this thing develop right there. If we make that block, so this block right here, we're engaged. Here's the screener. Okay. This guy is running off. 14's running with the wide receiver. We've got this blocked up. We've got two guys. Okay. They've got one right here for sure. You know, maybe you peel back and get the second one. Maybe the other guy comes from here. I mean, it, it's going to be a massive chunk. It's going to be a huge play. It's a great design. Just one little bit of the execution, and now it's a TFL. And the Ravens do a great job of rallying and making that play, setting the edge on it. 26 does a hell of a job taking on an offensive tackle and making that play. Oh, my goodness. Look, I mean, look at the lane. <laughs> Made to order. Instead, L. Next one here, third and 15. Now, they've already converted a third and 13 earlier in the game in the second quarter. Third and 15 is rough, and there's not a lot of great plays. We get a completion, and oftentimes many quarterbacks, quarterback rooms in the league will say, you know, take the profit, get a completion. Punting on a th after a third down completion is okay. Well, right here, it's probably not. <laughs> okay, again. Just look at the right guard and right tackle. Okay, what have we already talked about? And again, this is just my philosophy about it. Okay, I'm sure there are eight billion different ways to teach offensive line, but if we can get any sort of depth here, and we can make sure that the guards and tackles do not get beat inside, we've got a chance. So interior wise, let's get some depth. And again, I'll show it from the side, but watch the difference between the depth here and the depth here. And again, it's not the same block because he's going out to a three or a four eye. Yeah, I get it. He's, there's no one to go out there for, so it's easier for him to get depth. I get that, okay, guru. But what I am saying is we cannot continue to get beat across our face at right tackle. We cannot continue to leave the right tackle on an island because we're taking a squatter's rights drop. There's just there's too much of a window here in the B-gap for these pass rushers. They're licking their chops. And again, the reason why this is so important is because I'm going to show up top, we've got an opportunity. They run like a little circus and a little loop where if we're going to read the corner out there, we've got this throw. The CJ Stroud can make that throw. This should be a first down. But the pass protection, specifically on the right side, is not good enough. And watch the pass pro. Out. Whoop. Damn. I mean, it's the same fucking thing over and over. Great job by Stroud getting a completion. Now let's pretend that we actually block this thing up. Watch that circus by Collins up top, the number one. So we're going to run what I'm going to call this little up, in, out here. We're going to run this little loop or return out here, and we're going to read this corner. So if he hesitates at all, I want to throw this thing out here on the D, on the change, on the sideline. It's there. This, this is a throw, you know, I believe C.J. Stroud can make. That, that's why we're calling the play. But we've got to be able to pass protect, right? I mean, throw it out there on the NFL logo. Divisional me. Whew. 
put it right on the right on the E on the Inspire. Damn. Again, watch that left guard. And again, I, I'm acknowledging they're not the same blocks, right? The left guard is uncovered. But see how much depth he gets compared to the right guard? See how they're he's close to being on the same level as the left tackle? As opposed to the right guard and right tackle are not on the same level because they're able to get pierced right there? Damn. That's a shame. And again, you have to acknowledge the fact that who they're playing. They're playing a very good defense. But you got to give yourself a chance playing quarterback wise here. You got you to have enough time to be able to take a hitch. One, two, three, hitch. Oh, no. All right. Punt. Next one here. Start of the fourth quarter. Okay, this one hurts on a few different levels. First of all, the crosser down here to the bottom of the over is wide ass open. That's as open as it is all day. Okay, that hurts your soul that we couldn't get it to him. Collins running free. And guess what happens? Right tackle, beat inside. Right guard, not a presence. Got to throw it away. Our quarterback takes a massive shot. Fuck. I mean, it, I, I think it frustrates me so much that it's the same thing every single time. So whatever this is, post, this crosser, it takes a while to get there. But when you see it, I mean, it's there's there's it's that open. It's huge. And it's not the exact same block up top with the stun, but it's the same up into the B gap. You know, this one's even worse for me because I think we tried it. We get a terrible chip. It's really four on two over there. Again, the right guard is no presence, but the right tackle just gets beat inside again. So, I mean, this, this one is just sickening. This is the one you turn on the film and you want to throw up. Look how open it is. I mean, oh my God. But when it's open, Stroud's already running for his life. It takes too long to get there. And we take a big shot. Oh my God. So watch that pass protection on the right side. First of all, 86, we need a better chip than that. That looks like you're playing against your brother-in-law. And we need to thunder that cat. Right tackle. We just can't get beat inside again. Again, for my money, the right guard and right tackle are never close to working in tandem. They're never close to being at, at the same level. Whoop. Pierced. Plays over. And our quarterback gets smacked. Good night. Next one here, third and five. This is a tough one to watch. It ends up playing out where we have a free runner down here to the bottom. Uh, you know, again, we don't know for sure because we're not in the huddle or the installs about who's at fault. I personally would, if I had to venture a guess, I would put a lot of money on the running back being at fault here and needing to come across the formation and block the guy on our left edge. Now, regardless, we're going to be hot. Okay, so regardless for me, the ball probably has to come out as well. Okay, so what I'm saying here is the communication, for whatever reason, up front is not good enough because this guy looks confused. So at the snap, in a perfect world, you'd want the offensive line to block those five and the back to go to one of these edges. So if the back was to go up top, then we would just raise up here and throw this quick out. Now, does it get a first down? Maybe not. The back, what the back does here, looks like he thinks he's going here. So he comes across, that gets blocked, and now he panics. Most of the time, if the back's duel is one, he'll be on the same side too. So it would be here, no, continue this way, block this. Because it's really hard for the back to go one, two, where he has to go this way and then come all the way back out here. That's not good football. But he certainly could say, stay same side and go, no, this guy gets blocked, continue on and block the nickel. If that was the case, the free runner would be coming from up top and we would probably put it right on this tight end on whatever the hell route that is. Okay, so we've got answers. And I think C.J. Stroud sees it because he bails out of there. He knows he's got a hot issue. But we don't execute, probably at the running back position. But, man, this, this is third and five. This is third in your season. You know, you got to start getting some first downs, some second half points. I mean, what, what's the back doing? Oh, no. Again, good enough athlete to bail out. But there's nothing there. There's no play to be made. You know, I think the only thing you could potentially say with Stroud is if he knew he was hot to the left, 
the ball could be a quick out, catch throw. It doesn't look like he's playing that though, right? At the snap, we've only got six blocking. They've got the potential to bring seven. We're going to be hot on one of the sides. If we're hot to the right, I would want the ball thrown to 86 right now. Now it's going to be tight with 92 dropping in right in the window. You got to go create, you know, to his right. He's been really effective to his left. Not as effective, a lot harder. There's nothing there here. We're punting. Next one here. This is a tough one. We got a perfect call, stick nod versus middle field closed zone. You know, we certainly get some pass pro in our face again. Not easy to play quarterback with protection issues. Right guard struggling, getting turned, can't pass off the stunt. Probably should be a holding penalty as well. This is also a throw that, you know, CJ Stroud, I think, can make. So earlier in the video, we talked about the play double stick. Talked about how I didn't love how they threw it and he kind of panicked on it. Well, this is stick nod. So it's based off the same thing, except now the stick turns into this nod seam. And this becomes a loop or return. And when you catch middle field closed zone, so middle field closed, and then these underneath players are playing zone, there's a big window in here for a seam. That's exactly what it's called for. So this is one of my favorite calls of the game. It's there. Again, you know, is this good enough pass protection? No. Can we also make a better throw? Yes. Okay. It's, it's one of those throws where, again, the missed opportunities are one thing. The missed chunked opportunities, it's hard to win, right? Like, I mean, we're trying to play that thing with a little bit of anticipation. You can see him going to throw it, right? He's already throwing it right there. Here's the middle field safety. Here's that stick nod coming out of it into the seam area. Here's that loop of return, pulling that second level of the defense down. And that's going to create that nice seam window. It's there. Guess what, though? You can also see the hold, the color right in our face. So better all the way around. <sighs> the execution just nowhere near good enough. And they're a hell of a defense. They make life difficult on yourself. But you can't miss and continue to miss these chunk opportunities. Uh, and again, you know, I don't think this is C.J. Stroud's normal footwork. Watch his back foot. Hit it. Back. And again. To me, that's the pass pro impacting the footwork. Pass protection impacting the quarterback. So as he goes back here, hits his back foot, can't hitch up, and now has to hitch back. Now we're sky mailing this thing. Whoop. Last one here. Just salt in your wound. Fourth and six. We're going to be hot up top. We're going to throw it down here to the bottom. As we get hit, you know, we're, we're taking a big shot. We're hot to the right, free runner to the right. For some reason, we're working to the left. It's not there. The part that really stings is that when you look up top, I don't think you would ever see it. <laughs> yeah, but I, I will say, I think universally, and I, I feel like I say this a lot on the channel, if, the, if the, got, the free runner is over here, most quarterbacks, most systems would want to work the concept up top. So one of these guys is probably going to be hot. So whether it's someone in the flat, Something quick like a spot. Okay, the one that really sucks is when there's a miscommunication and a guy's wide ass open down the field. And if you could see it and pop it, it's going to score. That would really suck. What's really hard, though, is to work free runner over here on this side and then come down here and work anything down here because you don't, you can't see the free runner. You don't know how much time you have. In addition, they might drop somebody off into your lane. So now they have two over two, and they're dropping someone into your spot where you're trying to work this in. So free runner away, tough, tough. And of course, bro, up here, there's going to be a touchdown throw. God damn. I mean, just rough. So not the type of ball that I would want to you know, play where you're, very often where you're throwing hots away from the free runner. You can see the hit that Stroud takes here because of it. And look up top. There's a miscommunication. I don't think you're ever going to get to the point guy in the bunch to the post. You would, you would never. You would probably throw the flat to Collins, the number three up top, if you knew you were hot. Oh, my God. Just a big shot. You know, kind of felt like the wheels came off here in the second half, whether it was pass pro, decisions, hots, execution. 
just nowhere near good enough to win this thing. So that is a wrap. C.J. Stroud, the Texans, awesome year. C.J. Stroud, unbelievable performance over the course of your rookie season on so many different levels. You know, against Baltimore, this game probably wasn't good enough holistically as an offensive unit at a bunch of different spots over the course of the game to be good enough. I don't think that necessarily says anything specifically about C.J. Stroud. I thought Stroud played pretty damn well, maybe not up to the standard that he had created over the course of the season missing a few throws, but also made some throws, made some plays, gave them a chance as that game kind of progressed in the first half to be in it, you know, if they would have made a few more plays and not had so many issues over the course of that game. Too many penalties dropped and really too many missed assignments or mental errors at different positions. And again, we'll never know because we're not in the huddle, but when you turn on the film, whether it's the pass protection, whether it's the, you know, the tight end unit, offensive line, the running backs, the quarterback, the perimeter, you know, there were just never enough smooth drives where they were able to kind of put things together. Now, that is a testament not only to a lack of execution from the Texans, but also acknowledging the fact that the Ravens played a great game. They were, you know, causing terror up front, caused all sorts of issues to the pass protection unit, had tight, sticky coverage for most of the game as well. So all of those things go into making it a really tough environment on the road in the playoffs. That being said, I had a blast watching C.J. Stroud over the course of that season. Thank you so much for hanging to the end of this video. I will see you on the next one. Have a good one.